Okay, this is the second video in a series on trip planning using Google Earth. Uh, first video went through the basics of how to navigate, uh, pull in topo maps. So if you don't know how to do that, check out that first video. And this video we're just going to draw a route and go into some detail uh, with that process. So I'm going to just clean up my workspace a little bit. Uh, I'm going to create a folder to contain this. Add a folder and I'll call it uh, demo route. Now everything that I do I want to make sure I start within this folder so that it contains all of the line segments and, and points that I draw. Um, let's do one outside of Valdez, that's where I'm at right now. I'm using the search box to find Valdez and there it's got me. I'll kill that just again to make more real estate. But let's say we want to start here in Valdez and do a tour, come up, drop down onto this glacier, and work our way back into town. So I'll start with something real coarse. This tool here, if you hover over it, it says Add Path. And it opens up this editor box, which is big and in the way. So try to find a place to, to put it that's uh, as out of the way as possible. This is just kind of a bummer. If you need to uh, move your view, you can, let's say I click somewhere that I actually don't want to care about, but then that frees me up to use the arrow keys, the keyboard, and then I can just hit delete to get rid of that point. So I'm going to start in Valdez. Uh, an early mistake to make is to use your mouse or keypad um, or trackpad to draw a really detailed route like that. And the bummer is that if I have to go back in here and edit it, it would just take forever. So you don't want to do that. In fact, I'm just going to cancel that. Draw the line again. And you just want to add inflection points, basically. Um, a few enough that it's not such a big deal to change um, your route after the fact. Now, as soon as I hit this, I'm kind of annoyed that I've got white on white. I can change that with style and color. Maybe go to green. I'll make this quite a bit wider so it's easier for us to see. Now if I hit OK here, it's going to close this window, which means I can't edit anymore. To get back to that editing window, I can either control click to get info. On the PC or Linux, this is called properties. Um, so control click or right click to pull that up. I could also get that menu if I control click or right click on the, on the path uh, within the places. And that, once I can see these inflection points again, that's how I know I can edit it. And I'm going to select this leading point, it turns blue when I've selected it, and that allows me to, to keep drawing. So this looks like a tough section. I'm going to come in here with more detail in a second. So I just want to get something that's really coarse. Right now I want to draw something out of view, so I'll use the arrow keys to allow myself to see that. And I'm going to stop here on the water. Uh, there's a measurements tab here, and this is pretty useful, 18 miles. So I might just make a note there, and I'll give this a name, um, Valdez Loop. Now it might have been worth drawing one segment up until I expect to hit ice and then maybe having a second segment for ice uh, and that would just show up as another route here. We'll do that when we when we come back on the water. <clears throat> but for now I want to zoom in here and get a little more precise. So I'm going to zoom in, change my perspective, um, look to see where I might actually start this. Looks like there's a trail here, a bridge. Um, so I'm going to move this point so select it to get info, to pull up that editor's window, and move that point up to this bridge. This is a confusing point for a lot of people. These, these lines have to be drawn directionally, so it's always going to be, in this perspective, up from the selected point. So it's, it's tempting to think that I've got this one selected and I should be able to click down here to extend the line, but if I do that, it's extending it as though I'm going to move from that point up toward it, which is not what I wanted. So delete to get rid of that, or right click to get rid of that. So if I wanted to move this here, I'd have to drag that point and then work directionally back up to that bridge. 
Okay, but I'm going to assume we're going to start at the bridge. And I'm going to go pretty quickly here on this road. I don't want to give this a, a, a lot of time because um, you can get the idea from it. But I'm basically just trying to follow this road in some detail. I can zoom in a little bit. I'm using the plus key here to zoom in. Move a point onto the road, onto the road. I'm going to zoom in a bit more and change my perspective. Um, I'm going to do such a radical change of perspective that it's worth it for me just to OK this. Come in here, drag, do a bunch of spinning around. And now that I've done that, I'll go back, control click, get info, and get back into this editing mode. Okay, so now it looks like things get spicy. And, well, quite spicy. So this isn't something I've done. I'm going to just hit OK just to allow me to explore a bit. <clears throat> Pretty steep. And then this looks really steep, like this might be avalanche um, terrain. So there's a couple of things I can do here to evaluate this. Let's look at this slope first and get a sense for how steep it is, make sure we're willing to pass under it, or at least know that it might be a hazard. I'm going to draw another line segment, and I'll just do a fall line, roughly. Um, you could call this fall line, doesn't matter, I'm going to end up deleting it. And if I right click on that and get an elevation profile, this is pretty cool. I can read off of uh, the profile what the percent slope is, but I can also see where that position is on that line. And this also shows me the max slope, 94%, negative 76%, average 90. Those numbers, it's a bummer these aren't in degrees. But let's take that max slope 94. I'm not sure where that, uh, that's down here, and it's probably a glitch in the digital elevation model unless there's a little cliff there. But another sort of representative steep upper limit here, I see 75. I'm just reading these numbers here. 70, 70. So 75 is, is the steepest I've seen. Uh, okay, so that's not very useful as a percent slope. I'd open up Chrome and type in something like convert uh, slope percent, and there I've got it. Try one of these, online calculator. We said 75 was our upper limit. 37 degrees, okay, that's prime real estate for um, avalanches. So if I do pass in here, I'm gonna be pretty heads up about this slope. In fact, maybe it's worth making a waypoint here so that as I'm approaching it, I'm reminded heavy terrain, especially if I'm in a whiteout. This could also be useful. I'm going to uh, go back to north and untilt. I guess I'm not. Um, I just wanted to change my perspective a little bit here. Um, I'm going to leave this route. If I was doing this trip, I'd leave this route with an in-town contact. And then if we're overdue, they might see this and think, oh, we better check that Abbey terrain. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this point. I can either right click on it to delete it or come over here and just hit the delete button. Um, we could also measure the slope here to get a sense for how steep it is, but now that you know how to do that, I'm not going to do it twice. So let's make a plan to go up this drainage. It might be ambitious, but we can always turn around. It looks like staying on this north side might be the easiest route, and once you hit snow it looks great. I'm using the arrow keys to get a perspective. Okay, now this looks pretty gnarly. I'm going to save this and start looking for a way through this pass. This looks really steep, so I could use that elevation profile again. Let's look what the backside is. This looks pretty nice then it's matched with some pretty steep rock faces. And this all looks horrible. 
horrible, horrible, horrible. This is starting to look doable. Let's see what the backside looks like there. Man, pretty steep, but maybe not crazy. Maybe up this ridge. Let's shoot for that. Um, let's see where we are. I'm going north, untilt. Get my perspective, so this is where I want to get to. I'm going to control click or right click here. Get back into edit mode. Now I'm going to work my way over toward this pass. I'll come on. I'll come in here in a second and and fine tune it. Just something like that for now. And let's get the perspective. How we're going to get up this thing. So from here, I might even work to avoid that bird trim that's there. Put in a little detail. Come around that bird trim. Maybe I can get on this ridge. Stay on this ridge. And it looks like my best bet is maybe to start dropping in here. Definitely another bird trend. So I'm going to OK this. I'm going to do a few things. One, I'm curious about what, when this imagery is from, what season. And you see this time slider here. So this is a September 2006 image. So that's promising. That means that for, oh, that one was a September 2006. Hold on. Okay, so September, it's bare rock. Ooh, this is looking pretty cliffy. This might might be too ambitious. This is a June image. So if there's snow sticking in June, it's possible that in March, this wouldn't be that hard. So I'd have to be pretty heads up about avalanches. So that was historical imagery. I'll close that. I'm going to go north on tilt. That's N and U. And I'm just going to make a couple waypoints here. Um, again, for that in-town contact. I'm going to call this the crux. It doesn't need to be in all caps. Crux. That way, if I'm overdue, this might be one of the first places that they would look. And while I'm at it, I might go in with some extra detail here. And maybe I'll just draw a little section here that kind of highlights the worst part of this um, bird trend. And I'll give it a different color so it's so it's obvious. Um, bird trend. So I'm just trying to add detail here that might be useful assuming and I don't want to be anywhere near this in a whiteout but if I had to be um, that might be nice to know. So Maybe I do something similar here with this big crack. Big crack. Okay, just adding a couple points that are going to be useful for me. I'm going to take all this information on my phone when I when I do the trip. Uh, working our way down the glacier. Uh, I don't need to go over this big landslide. Wow, that is awesome. So I'll allow myself to wrap around it. That is super cool. Um, work my way down to the ocean, and I'll be exact enough to draw this down the edge of the ice. Okay, it looks like the resolution is really bad at the bottom here, so I don't know how cracked up that actually is. So I'd probably make a note that this looks pretty doable, and maybe I'd draw another line segment here. I'll give it a different color. I just like having different colors so visually I'm clued in that these are different things. And this is an off ice option. Okay. Now we're on the water. Uh, I know there are a couple cabins in here. Uh, here they are. So I would drop some waypoints for those. Cabin one. 
waypoint cabin two and I think I'd try to hike there. So I'll draw another waypoint, uh, sorry, another route from my beach there. If I was actually doing this trip, I'd come in in a lot more detail. Um, I don't want this to be pink because my last one was pink. And I'll say that's uh, beach walk, two cabins. And I know <clears throat> that there's this trail accessing those cabins. Uh, so the last thing I would do would be to draw a route along that trail. And again, I'm now I'm repeating stuff that, that is pretty straightforward. You know how to do. So I'm just going to do this one real coarsely and quickly. Uh, kind of lost the trail there. Maybe it's up here. Good enough for me, but I would come back and I would and I put this in a lot of detail. I'm working my way back to Valdez. Here I see it's up the hill slope. Uh, it'd probably be worth ending there in town. Um, north until I'm going to zoom out a bit. It'd be worth using that elevation profile again to get a look at these slopes. These could all be pretty nasty. It's possible that uh, if it's spring shedding uh, season, maybe I'd rather have a boat and paddle this so I could bring a pack raft. And then I'd be drawing this route along the water edge. But the only thing we're missing is where the burger or pizza is to finish the trip. So I think for Valdez, maybe that's somewhere in here. And that's pizza. Okay, so I've done a lot. Um, the historical imagery, the slope, getting slope percent from the elevation profile, and building information in for my in-town contact. And then I would take this whole folder, demo root folder, right click on it to save as, throw it on my desktop, or I have a mapping folder, demo root, save. Now I can take this route, pull it into, I use Gaia or Gaia GPS, um, and then I'll have access to all of this and the imagery on my iPhone, even if I'm outside of cell or Wi-Fi signals. Okay, that was a lot. Um, hope, hope you got it. <laughs>